Hi everyone, this is Terry Gillis, President and CEO of Aria Consulting. Thank you for joining us today. These are incredible times and we are experiencing probably a once in a lifetime, and I hope it's a once in a lifetime, seismic shift in how we go about our daily lives. The biggest shift, of course, is a sudden move to online or virtual work. Most of us did not plan for this. Most of us were not ready for this. And most importantly, most of us have no choice in this. At times like this, we hope we can offer some productive insights, some tips, and frankly, just some good community to folks like yourselves. The good news, this is not foreign to us. We are an equity partner in the world's largest talent management consultancy, Career Partners International. We meet with our colleagues from around the world regularly. In fact, just this morning, our board met to discuss action steps relevant to the COVID-19 crisis. I'd like to introduce you now to Jinsi George, one of ARIA's talent management consultants. She will explain her background to you and provide what we hope will, what we hope will be some good tips as you move towards virtual teams and remote work. Please note that if there's anything that we can do for you, your team, your employees, or your organization, we are standing by. We appreciate you joining us today. Jinsi. Thank you, Terry. Thank you so much. Hi everybody, thank you again for joining us today. Before I move on and introduce myself and we proceed, a few notes on the logistics of the webinar. Uh, we have a lot of participants joining us today on the webinar, so uh, to avoid background noise, you will be on mute. Um, we would, however, want this webinar to be highly interactive. Therefore, please use the Q&A or the chat um, icon on the bottom of your screen to talk to us. So you can post your questions on the Q&A window. Questions are going to be anonymous, so ask away. Um, I will try and take the questions at the end of the session. So even if we have to stay a little over time to um, answer the questions, we will do that. Uh, you can use the chat window to post comments, to share your feedback, to share um, your ideas and thoughts while we are um, you know, on the webinar. You can also use the raise your hand function. Maybe a lot of you are already using it. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, I also wanted to tell you that a recording of this webinar will be shared with all of you at the end of the webinar. Okay. Having done the logistics, having taken care of the logistics, let's move on to um, uh, start the webinar. Let's start with me. Uh, I am Jinsi George. I am a learning and development consultant with ARIA. I have been in the learning and development domain for the last 13 years. Um, and I'm also someone who has spent over two years working virtually. Uh, so I'm not new to this world of virtual working and remote working. And I know the challenges of a virtual workplace really well. Uh, building relationships with colleagues that I have never met before or working across time zones, being called at really odd hours in the morning. Um, technology that doesn't really support us and doesn't really cooperate at times. Uh, all of these can really sabotage uh, a team's chance to success and I know that and I've seen that happening. Uh, communication can get muddled, trust and collaboration can suffer um, um, and it's, it's really not uh, new. Um, now, despite all of these issues, um, virtual work is here to stay. Virtual teams are here to stay. And it is no new news. Okay? A lot of organizations, uh, a lot of our clients have been working with us um, uh, on flexible workplace policies, on work from home policies. Telecommuting has become really um, you know, a norm uh, and a lot of organizations are choosing to add that into their policies. So it is not new for any of us and virtual teams is the way to go. And you all also know that the millennial generation uh, would love to work from any place that they choose to work from. So um, like I said, virtual teams is here to stay and all we need to do is the real challenge here is how do we adapt to this new world of work? How do we prepare ourselves to support our employees who will now go into a virtual space? So let's start by shifting our lenses to the advantages of virtual work 
And my first um, you know, question to all of you today is, what according to you are some benefits of remote or virtual work? So I see um, some of you have started typing. Yes, I am seeing uh, responses come in for this question. What are the benefits of remote or virtual work? So I see ben uh, uh, responses are already pouring in. So I have people saying less stress. Um, yes, uh, I have another response here which says higher productivity. Okay. Uh, less time taken out for healthcare, that's true. Um, higher morale, okay, better morale. I'm seeing morale come up a lot of times here on the chat window. Um, I'm seeing less stress again. Better work-life balance has showed up, yes, okay. Less interruptions, fewer interruptions. I'm seeing interruptions uh, you know, being less um, as a benefit, being, uh, you know, showing up again and again. Okay. Yes. So, you know, a lot of you, thank you so much for responding to that question. Yes. Uh, one of the, you know, uh, one of the benefits and, you know, there are so many benefits of virtual work is um, lowered costs, right? So as we all understand, there's lowered overhead uh, there's low carbon footprint, there's increased productivity, and numerous studies show us that productivity is in fact higher. Um, lower attrition um, from those who get have the ability of working from home, lowered expenses related to sick time and uh, you know, prolonged breaks. So uh, apart from all of these benefits, a study, a Stanford study actually found out that organizations can actually save an average of $2,000 per employee by letting them work from home. Now that same study also showed that those who work from home were more productive uh, than those who regularly came to a uh, company's office, come, came to a physical space. So clearly there are, there are a lot of benefits of virtual work. In the past, virtual work was difficult to manage, but now with so much new technology that's infused the space of work, I believe that virtual work is much more easier to manage as it was, than it was before. So now let's really look at, you know, some part in, in this webinar, I am going to talk about how technology can really assist you uh, in order to manage your virtual teams. Now, um, in ARIA, we never talk about anything unless there is a scientific backing to what we are talking about. So before we went on to this webinar, we looked at, okay, is there a scientific study? Is there, is there any sort of a data analysis that has happened, which can really show us what are the pros of virtual working and what are the cons of virtual working? So is there anything out there that can definitely tell us, you know, um, what uh, are the benefits and what are the drawbacks of people working from home? So what we found, and I, I'm not sure how many of you have seen this before, um, this is the Google People Innovation Lab experiment. And um, you know, Google has 100,000 employees across 50 countries, and, the, and they did this experiment over two years. Um, they involved about 5,000 employees in this experiment, and they had hundreds of focus group discussions. These employees belong to 150 cities across 50 countries. So what did they really find out from this? They found out that um, the pros or the advantages of working from home, what they found out is effectiveness, performance ratings, and promotions were not affected at all by working from home. So you know there was no impact on people's performance when they started working from a virtual space. The other thing they found out is the well-being standards uh, of people, those who came to work and those who worked virtually were comparable so you know folks at work and folks who worked virtually they were both um, you know they both had the same amount of health issues and the same amount of well-being standards so now what is it that they found uh, being a drawback of virtual working or what is it that wasn't really uh, you know doing well when people started working from different spaces uh, what got impacted as people's you know, moved into virtual working is communication, trust, and productivity. So Google found out that there was, uh, you know, uh, people were struggling to feel connected and um, relatedness was taking a hit. 
Uh, there was a uh, you know, trust element that was probably suffering from people working virtually. And while productivity um, you know, was not impacted, but leaders constantly in the survey said that they were finding it a struggle to manage productivity and manage work of employees. So that's what the, the survey found. Um, so now um, I am going to talk about these three things in the next part of the webinar, which is how do you, you know, better our communication? How do you build trust and how do you improve productivity when you have team members who are now going to be working from home? So let's move on to, um, you know, the first one. But before we go there, I wanted to um, share with you what Julie Wilson, who was, an, who was an instructor at Howard University said. So what she said is, Managing a virtual team requires managers to double down on the fundamentals of good management, including establishing clear goals, running great meetings, communicating clearly, leveraging team members' individual and collective strengths. So what Julie is essentially saying here is that the tools that you use to manage teams in the same physical space versus the team tools that you use to manage people who are working virtually they are all the same. The, the only difference is that you are using more of the same things to get virtual teams, um, you know, to work and collaborate at the same levels as those, you know, at, at the same levels as those of the people who are working together in a physical space. So that is what Julie Wilson is talking about. So now let's just move on to you know, what do we really need to do when it comes to communication, trust, and uh, productivity? What is it that we need to do more of? So with communication, the idea is to connect often and connect more effectively with people who are working from home. So um, communication is key in any workplace, and I we, nobody has to say that, really. So... Um, you know, your job as a leader is to ensure a free flow of accurate information throughout your organization. Now, you know, regular updates, you know, holding regular check-ins with your employees. All of these, you know, your staff will see that you're on top of your communication, you are sharing everything that you know, and that probably works towards building trust with your team members. Now, um, the first thing I want to tell all of you is to check if you have one-on-one -on -one calendared meetings one-on-one uh, -on -one meetings on your calendar with everybody in your teams. So when you are in a physical space at work, you have the ability to stop someone in the hallway and say, hey, how's it going? What are you up to? But when you are in a virtual space, you don't bump into each other often. So the one way that you can simulate that bumping into that happens in a physical space is by actually virtually bumping into people, which is having a one-on-one -on -one or you know, informal check-ins. So please check if you have one-on-ones already scheduled. If you don't, have them scheduled as soon as possible so that you're meeting people every week and you're getting an update from them. Now, when you do have these one-on-ones or your weekly team meetings, there is a tendency to immediately jump on to what get, needs to be done, right? Getting things done is what leaders are good at. But to move away from that, tendency of you know getting things done into really finding out you know spending that first five minutes to find out something about you know their personal well-being and maybe sharing a professional success story in the first five minutes of you connecting so that's a great tip uh, you know for leaders um, who are you know on deadline uh, and want to get projects moving to really spend a little bit of time to connect with the employee before they go to that space yeah, um, weekly team meetings are a great place to actually connect with a larger team. Also, if you have a new member who's joined your team, this is a great place to know other members of the team. Um, 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 one of the things that I would tell leaders is to insist on 100% participation. What we have seen from a lot of studies, um, especially one study that said that there is 82% loss of productivity uh, on these team meetings because people are distracted, right? So people are on their phones or they're going into the, into the bathrooms um, and uh, there is no way that you know, you know, whether they are really keyed in on what's happening on their screens. So one of the ways you can really have 100% participation is to 
have people join on video. So have people join on video. Um, um, so they are really focusing and they can, you know, you can reduce the tendency of being distracted. Okay, so those are a few ways, right? Don't underestimate the, the power of a telephone call and text messages as well. Millennials will tell you that they love text messages. So text messages are a great way to go too. So don't underestimate the power of the phone, um, you know, the ability to just send a text saying, hey, what's up, what's happening? All of these are ways in which you can stay connected and stay in communication with people who are not seeing you 100% of the time. Okay. Now, the other way you can improve your communication is to actually use technology to your advantage. And I'm sure a lot of you are already using technology in your organizations to stay connected. Um, so my uh, first question to, uh, second question actually, to all of you on call, keep your fingers on your keyboard. Uh, the question is, what online tools do you currently use in your organization to make virtual work possible? What are you currently using? Okay, I have some responses here. Trello, I'm seeing Trello, okay. Um, uh, I'm seeing Microsoft Teams, yes. Another one, Microsoft Teams, okay. I'm seeing Asana come up a couple of times, yes, okay. And I'm seeing Skype, WebEx, yes. Skype for teleconferencing, Zoom for teleconferencing, yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And I'm seeing someone saying Trello. Mm -hmm. Trello, yes. Trello for scheduling of work. Okay. I'm seeing Todoist coming up. Yes. Todoist for scheduling work and projects. Yes. Okay. Welcome a jig. Yes. Welcome a jig. I'm also seeing someone saying Igloo. They use Igloo in their organization. Yes. I'm not really uh, familiar with Igloo, but thanks for sharing that. Yes. Smart space, all right. Okay, great. Thank you, thank you. So that's a lot of responses there, okay. Thank you guys. So a lot of you are already leveraging technology to, you know, in your organizations. And I thought it'll benefit you if I have a list of um, uh, tools that you could be using to get your teams on the same, you know, on the same platform. So for chat, you know, Slack, Twist, or, uh, Microsoft Teams, I think I had somebody in the chat window saying they already use Slack. Um, so these are good, great chat uh, tools. For project management, Trello is a great chat, uh, a great tool. Asana is a great tool. And I think a lot of you already did mention Trello and Asana. Uh, then we have Microsoft Teams, Zoom, and WebEx, GoToMeeting uh, for web or video conferencing. Um, I also see, you know, um, Microsoft Teams has come up a lot of times in the chat window already. Yes, yeah, so it looks like a lot of you are already going there. Somebody's written that they're starting um, the use of Microsoft Teams starting this week. So it's great if you are embracing new technology and you know bringing new technology in. My only caution would be to train people on how to use it constantly till people are you know um, till people have reached a space of. Um, unconscious competence, right? Uh, get them to use the uh, software often and have a tra small dosage of training constantly um, given to these employees so they can get comfortable. Calendly for scheduling and you have uh, Microsoft Power Automate, which used to be called Microsoft Flow for workflow automation. Yeah. So while I give, while I, while there is this list of things that you can be using, one of my, one, the, another thing that I would like to tell you is when you are uh, inviting people on conference calls, um, please remove that access code function or the, you know, use a password to enter function. Please take that off or, um, you know, unselect that because you don't want people to be struggling to find an access code or a password and then calling up asking for, do you have that email? Do you have that email? So make it easy for people to join uh, these web conferences. The second thing I would like to tell you is you would have a lot of people who are quiet in these calls. And if you, especially if you don't have people on video, um, you know, you will have people who are quiet and then you will have one of those enthusiastic people in your uh, groups who's saying, you know, who's constantly giving input. Um, now, there is a tendency of leaders to get swept away by that one person who's loud and constantly in the limelight. 
So to avoid that tendency, write down the names of all the team members who joined the call and then make it a point to call each one of them out and ask them for their input. So that's a great way of getting people to respond on a web conference and teleconference. So have them really individually respond. Okay, now from communication, let's move on to technology. Uh, now, when I, oh, sorry, move on to trust. Okay, let's move on to trust. Now, in today's times, trust is really something that is, you know, hanging on the precipice because of what's happening and these critical decisions that are being made in the organizations right now around laying people off or changing um, or resource allocation. So trust is really, um, strained right now and as leaders one of our jobs is to really help build trust now how can you do it with your teams is following up and following through so if you said you want to get back get back if you said you're going to follow up on something follow up on that thing so that's extremely important um, uh, because people are you know people would know that you hold up your end of the discussion so lead by example by following up and following through uh, the second a tip that I have for you is um, when you are virtually working, there may be reduced spaces for you to have healthy conflicts and healthy debates. Now, if you experience that as a leader, your job is to nudge conflicts out. Um, so if you are finding on conference calls or on, you know, um, uh, a, a, you know, a video go to meeting, you're finding sentences trailing off or people, you know, really uh, you know, stopping themselves from saying something. If you find those things happening, bring those conflicts out and put them out in the open and then encourage caring criticism. Now, uh, I get a lot of questions around what, does, what is caring criticism? How do you really do it? I generally like to give two phrases to people, um, you know, struggling with how do you criticize, but in a respectful and um, empathetic manner. Those two phrases are, one is, um a, a phrase which is i might suggest right i might suggest and the other phrase is think about this right i might suggest and think about this encourage teach your teams to use those two terms but uh, you know but not let conflict simmer away but to bring those conflicts out in the open um Another way to build trust is to allow autonomy in decision making. Now, how many of you would say that uh, if you are given autonomy in making decisions, you are going to trust your leaders more? Uh, just raise your hands. Yes. Okay. I see a lot of hands being raised. Great. Okay. So, yes, I, you know, don't become uh, obsessed with uh, man, you know, making small decisions. Allow your team members to make those small decisions, empower them, train them, and coach them to be able to make those decisions. But then once you do that, move away from it. Also, while I say that, be specific about what, you know, how you want them to go about their work. If you say, get back to me by the end of the day, um, be specific. Do you want them to get back to you and share the decision they've made or do you want them to get back to you and, um, you know, ask you to make the decision? What is it that you specifically want them to do? A lot of times um, I hear from people that, you know, come into the training programs that we do. I hear people say, oh, I, did I have to really say that? I thought it was obvious or I didn't think I needed to spell that out or, oh, but that's just common sense. When you're working in a virtual space, don't assume anything is common sense. Uh, state it, state, um, you know, turnaround time, state what happens if deadlines are missed, state what happens if people are not able to reach another team member, make it very, very specific and clear. And the last one I have is celebrate successes. Um, especially in these times, it's very important to uh, recognize um, and, you know, reward by acknowledging and appreciating people's work. Uh, appreciate that one hardworking employee of yours who's probably, um, you know, been working from home for hours to get some project done. Uh, appreciate that other person who joined the call, even though he or she was outside of their, you know, the, the timing was outside of their, um, um, 
you know, their regular working hours, appreciate them, appreciate that one employee who stayed longer to take a call with a client, make sure that the entire team knows. So send out an email appreciating people who are making that extra effort. That really goes to build trust um, and, you know, makes people feel acknowledged and seen, which is extremely important when you're actually not being seen, right? So make that extra effort as a leader. Uh, to celebrate small wins and small successes. So now um, from that, we move on to productivity, which is one question a lot of people would have, right? Trust is good, communication is good. How do I ensure that work is done? Yes, so how do you ensure work is done? Uh, and it's this, like I said, not different from how you manage your teams that come to work every day. It's the same things you do for virtual teams. Clarify the goal. Have be very, very clear about what are the goals that they are out to achieve. In fact, say it multiple times, have it written in an email, share it multiple times. So it could be daily goals, weekly goals, monthly goals. Tell them clearly where they are headed. And once you do that, you can monitor their performance. You can evaluate your performance with respect, with respect to the goal. The second thing is, um, improve, you know, increase accountability related to how they're using time. Uh, now, a lot of organizations have inbuilt capabilities to track time. Uh, we have an organic time tracking tool in our organization. Um, a lot of organizations use uh, Harvest or Toggle to manage time, to track time. I've also seen organizations where you bill to a particular project code um, the amount of time that you've worked. Um, and billing doesn't necessarily mean that you're being paid uh, by a client. It just means that you're saying, I did so much work for so many hours with this particular project. And the project lead will then approve that time um, based on whether or not the employee really did put in that time. So that's a great way of ensuring that people are using um, uh, the time at home to work and not to like manage their personal things or manage children. Now, um, having said that, the idea is not to micromanage. The idea is to actually check whether goals are being met, right? And not what they are doing every hour of the day, not their, what they are doing every minute of the day. The idea is to check whether the goals you've set and things you wanted to get done by the day are being done. Um, check in regularly, right? Um, especially when you have those high performing team members who are going to take up a lot of work because they are working from home and those guys, those folks in your team who have the tendency who've had the tendency in the past to blur lines between personal and professional time uh, check in on them see if the workload is too much and if you need to reallocate um, the workload uh, also you would know if there are people who have no workload or who have less to do and um, that'll help you really manage uh, balance um, work. Um, the fourth point on the screen is huddles and informal check-ins. And I can't emphasize this um, uh, enough, which is every day, if you want your teams to feel connected and feel like they, they know which team they work for, have your team come together for five minutes in the beginning of the day um, and then just talk about what are they working on today? What are the goals they plan to accomplish at the end of the day? Whom, what help do they need from their team members? What support do they need from the leader? It's a five minute scrum meeting, something like a stand up you would do at work, which you can do on the phone or on Skype or on Zoom. So my advice to you would be to calendar it, put it on everybody's calendar. Everyone knows at nine o'clock in the morning, I have a huddle and I have to be there for the huddle. And then, you know, ensure that you stick to the rhythm of the, of the huddle, because once you start rescheduling it or canceling it, it will again become the culture, right? And accountability goes for a toss. The last point here is child-free time. Now, the, you know, I understand a lot of daycares are closed as of today. And, um, you know, children are going to be home with the parents who are trying to get work done. So one of the, um, you know, one of the suggestions or advice you can give to your team members is to have child-free time. Now, this is a time you actually give an activity to your child, uh, get them busy, and then you kind of close your doors to any distraction and you are, you know, dedicating a, a, a brief amount of time to a particular project. 
So that's a good suggestion to have. Now, for, you know, we are holding another webinar next week on how to work from home. So if you have employees who are now going to work from home and you want them to learn, you know, some new strategies on how to work from home, please do uh, have them sign up for the webinar and that'll be great for them. Um, now, you know, having said all of this, how to, how to improve your communication, how to build trust, how to improve people's productivity, um, we believe that virtual work is just a different kind of work and it's not a more difficult sort of work, it's just different. And all we need is a plan in place. So like I said, we do the same things we do for our physical teams, but we do more of those things when our teams are sitting in different places and sitting virtually. So um, that's all I have for today. I see a lot of uh, questions on the chat window and I'm going to uh, address them now. I have someone asking, um, what was the, Time tracking tool you spoke about, I heard Harvest, what was the other? The other was Toggle, uh, it's T-O-G-G-L. And um, you know, I'm sure that there are a lot more of them out there. Okay, I have someone who's actually sent a link now uh, and the link is on um, you know, time tracking tools out there. So thank you so much for the link. I'm going to copy paste it for everybody in the chat window. Um, oh, I have another link now. So lots of links being sent and I'll, I'll try keep, you know, copy pasting that for all of you to take a look at. So those are the time tracking ones. I have someone asking, where is the webinar information for the next week? Yes. So it's not up on our um, page yet, but if you are following the ARIA Consulting LinkedIn page, you will see our webinar information there. And if you are, uh, if you can go and check on our website, uh, website aria.ca, in a couple of days, you will find all the information for the webinar for next week there. Um, I have another question here. Uh, what about costs like home phone, internet from home, etc.? How do we manage that? We've never had to manage that before. Yes. So uh, that is a more HR related question. Okay. In, in, you know, costs, sick leaves, how do you manage flexible work policy, etc.? We have a webinar tomorrow on the role of HR. Uh, during these times. Uh, so, you know, please find that webinar on LinkedIn and register for it. And I'm sure you will have, uh, you know, a lot of good uh, information there on how to, uh, what your role is in HR and how to manage these expenses and things like that. Yeah. Okay. I have another question here. We are overwhelmed. How can Aria help us at this time? Thank you for that question. Uh, thanks for asking. Um, I believe when you say you're overwhelmed, you're talking about this whole working from home virtual work situation. Uh, we can definitely help. We have um, worked with a lot of clients to you know, help them with their flexible workplace policy. And we've also helped people create work from home policies. Um, clients create work from home policies and we can do that for you. We also have workshops, webinars, and training programs on how do you work from home and how do you manage people who work from home. This was half an hour, so there was only little time to do a lot, uh, but there is, um, you know, we, we do workshops for more than an hour also on working from home and managing people who work from home. So there are multiple ways in which we can help you. Um, please connect with me as soon as the webinar is over and we can chat more. Okay. Yes, so uh, I think with that, we come to the end of this webinar. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining. I'm reminding you that there are two webinars this week, two more webinars this week, one on the role of HR, which is tomorrow, and another one on leading in these turbulent times. That's day after tomorrow. So please feel free to log into those. They are all complimentary. Um, thank you again for joining. And um, um, we will see you in our other webinars. Uh, stay safe and um, stay away from everybody. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye.